Uh, we're pleased to speak today with Guy Gabriel Kay, one of Canada's best historical fiction authors. Uh, in the last 25 years or so, Guy has written 10 novels and one collection of poetry, has found himself on bestsellers lists numerous times, and has a nice collection of awards, including the World Fantasy Award for 2008. He is now releasing his 11th novel, Under Heaven, and he joins us to talk about it today. Thank you. Hi. Um, we have a few questions, and first I wanted to say that um, I'm really enjoying the book. Thank it's you. fantastic. Um, and I just That's usually a good start for me. <laughs> it's a good start, yes. Um, when you think back when you started writing your first books in the Finnevar Tapestry, are you surprised that you built up such a following and became such a successful writer? I think you always have to be surprised. I think it would imply a, a a remarkable degree of arrogance to begin your career and expect to end up uh, highly successful. Uh, I've been really lucky, mm -hmm. not just in, in terms of the uh, international commercial response to the book, but also, and I always say this, I'm really lucky in my readers that uh, my joke is that there are some writers whose readers I wouldn't necessarily want and mine, over the years, seem to be really uh, generous, intelligent people, the ones who I end up in touch with. Uh, you might turn around and say, the idiots are less likely to get in touch with you, but that's not quite true in the modern world. So I've been really fortunate that way. Um, and um, an interesting aspect about your novels is the way you develop complex characters. They're neither extremely good or extremely evil. It's not very cut and dry. Um, what made you decide to write and formulate characters in that fashion? Uh, you know, the, all of typical. us, yeah. all of us, I think, if we're serious about our writing, are writing the sorts of books that we'd like to read if somebody else wrote them. So, mm -hmm. as a reader, I'm drawn to more complex characterization hand in hand with uh, narrative drive. The word I often use is verb. I like books with verb. So as I've been doing the books over the years, it was never a conscious decision that I'm going to try to make people more complicated or I'm going to try to avoid black and white morality. It's simply what interests me more. It was organic. It just how it came it's out. It's absolutely so. And I get bored as a reader, if the characters are too one-dimensional, uh, if the narrative dominates characterization too much. I also get bored if a book is only about introspective characterization. I do want both halves of that equation. So I think it was simply a case of writing the books that I would like to read if somebody else did it. That makes perfect sense. Um, and in all of your books, it seems that you've taken the time to do your research um, about the lands which you base your novel around, such as Byzantium or and Andalus, Spain, um, for your novel, novels in general and for Under Heaven in particular. Um, how do you go about doing the research, learning the places? Is it a very time-consuming process? A lot of it is taking time. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is, is, is being willing or able to take your time between books and uh, put the, the labor into uh, reading, correspondence, sometimes travel. Uh, the internet has been a wonderful tool for me, not so much for what is online, but for who you can find online. Mm -hmm. Because innumerable cases, I've read a book or uh, an article in, in a scholarly journal, and I thought, this is really good, but I have this question, that question, and the other question. And because of the net, uh, I can usually, more often than not now, uh, find access to the person who wrote that book or article. And one of the small benefits, there aren't a whole lot of them, of getting older, <laughs> is that people have more often come to know who I am by now, so if I suddenly pop up like a genie in somebody's inbox, they don't kick me into the you spam folder. Yeah. Yes, yes, and I've had some really generous responses from academics and scholars mm -hmm. working in the period that I'm 
try to get a handle on for the new fiction. Uh, the research phase is unquestionably my favorite part of writing really? a book. Sure, because mm -hmm. I'm learning things and I don't have any responsibility yet. It's the stage when I'm just studying stuff that's right. interesting and I don't yet have the burden of, building it. of turning it into a book. And so I suffer dreadfully every novel from grad student syndrome. You know, the grad <laughs> student syndrome is that tendency to always say there's one more article, one more thing you have to chase down before you start writing a dissertation. Right. And at some point with every book, I become aware that I'm stalling. Right. That I've got eight or ten more things I want to read, note it down. And I'm telling myself, you are delaying. You know enough to start, and you can read them while you're writing. Right. And so I, I lash myself a little bit to get started with the actual writing. Um, and, and this is uh, my, my question of interest, uh, final question, that um, most of your novels are set in a European setting. What all of a sudden made you shift and choose medieval, what, Catan, China, the whole... It's not an all of a sudden thing. Uh, I have something of a horror of repeating myself in too direct a fashion. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily commercially smart, because in the culture we live in, it's really intelligent from a commercial point of view to do sequels. Do what you're doing well and continue. Sure. Right. Or if you had a success with a book about the Tudors, do eight more books about the Tudors. Just pick a different Tudor princess and stay in that period. So commercially, that's the way to go. Artistically, creatively, I need to be strongly energized to spend at least three years, because the books are taking me three years now of research and writing, to spend that amount of time, pretty much full time, delving into uh, a period and then trying to come out of that delving with the book. Uh, I need to be motivated in a big way. And for me, that motivation comes from looking for something fresh. new. Right. Looking for something fresh, looking for something that can excite me because I haven't been there before. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're I very appreciate welcome. you taking the time. Thank you.